Hello to everyone interested in moving to Panama, either for retirement or simply to live and work here in a slightly better climate and conditions. Today we will discuss the topic of gated communities on beaches in Panama. Do you think you know what it is about? I explain to you in a moment that you don't know and I hope that this concept will be quite interesting for you. Imagine waking up every day and the sun is shining outside the window. You go out to the balcony for coffee and the ocean greets you there. This is what life is like in a gated community on a Panamanian beach. And now I will try to explain what is really difficult to explain, especially to people from Europe or North America. The kind of gated communities we have in Panama simply do not exist on other continents. It only has the same name, but the concept is completely different. But before I go on to explain exactly what it is, let me ask you whether you have been on holiday in any resort. The vast majority have been. Now imagine that you can live in such a resort permanently. That's what Panama offers. Now I will show you what a typical gated community in Panama looks like. This is our Rayomar community where we have lived for over eight years. I will also briefly present what other similar communities look like. But why talk about it at all? I have already mentioned earlier that the type of gated communities that exist in Panama do not exist anywhere in the world. There is a similar style in Costa Rica, but it is not on the same level. You can also find something in Mexico or even the Dominican Republic, but it is a different standard and slightly different problems related to life in these countries. North America has a different type of gated community and Europe has another... Currently, there are 28 gated communities in Panama on beaches, far from large cities. Of those, 25 are in the Coronado area. The other three are in Boca Chica, Playa Venao, and Pedasi. But this is a slightly different standard. Most of these settlements stretch for approximately 60 kilometers along the Pacific Ocean, about one and a half to two hours drive from Panama City. Panama has about 2,500 kilometers of beaches, and here on less than 60 kilometers, we have 90% of gated communities from the entire country. And what's the reason for this? You must come and see for yourself. I would only add that the climate here is of enormous importance. The locals call this area Arco Seco, the so-called dry circle. It simply rains much less here. Even during the rainy season, it has never happened to rain several days in a row. The temperature is also very pleasant, between 26 and 32 Celsius degrees all year round. The water in the pools and the ocean is warm for 12 months a year, which cannot be said about Mexico or the Caribbean islands, for example, where you cannot enter the pool in January. Nobody here has heated swimming pools, because there is simply no need to heat them. And... Here, I once heard a comment like, I don't want to live beyond the wall. I need to integrate with the local people and not be closed out somewhere. I'll go over this briefly just to get it over with. This comment is typical of people who have never been to a beach community in their life and only have a vague idea because they watched a movie. Yet another thing is integration. When someone comes to another country to work, they should integrate, learn the language and immerse themselves in the local society because then you are part of this system. But when you live in a gated community, when you don't have a job here and you don't get anything from the system and you pay for everything yourself, you have no moral obligation to integrate with anyone. If you want to integrate, if you don't want to, it's up to you. Here we see quite empty pools. You will see something similar in other videos because I tried to record them not to show people, but the communities themselves. This is the hottest hour of the day, in the early afternoon, when the temperature reaches 30 to 32 degrees. Moreover, what is even more important is that it is the middle of the week, so those who are supposed to return to Panama City have already returned. But on the weekend, it looks completely different. But this video is not about showing people, but communities. So we come back to the fact that life in the so-called bubble is quite good, here I will quote my friend's answer, which is probably the most accurate explanation. When he was once waiting for a friend at Starbucks in Malaysia and drinking coffee, this newly arrived friend asked him, you're the one who lives in Malaysia and drinks coffee at Starbucks. Why? 
The second one replied, because I simply like it. This was the best answer that probably explained everything. At a certain age, we have already experimented a lot in our lives and we already know what is best for us. The 32nd coffee plantation or the 26th winery no longer made any impression. Then you resort to what is best and not chase it just because it is new. And this life in a gated community is the piece of luxury that you would like to have in every country. Do you want to have some exoticism? You have it right behind the entrance gate. It's like you could go on vacation almost any day. Just get in the car and in less than a minute, you will be somewhere where a different language is spoken and there is a different culture. But you choose where you live and you would like to take it with you wherever you travel. And Panama allows you to do this to some extent because you don't have to change your life so drastically to live here. You have the option to have the same comforts you have become accustomed to throughout your life, only in a much better climate. That is why countries with a warmer climate, but also with developed infrastructure, are attractive to retirees. And now, what is the concept of these gated communities? In short, it can be described as a good resort from which you will ask most of the guests to leave. But you and some of your best friends are here to stay. Many people come here just to live in such a community for a month or two. Some people even take their job with them and extend their stay to a year or stay permanently. But it is not exactly a typical holiday resort. This is the most common mistake of people who come here for the first time to visit. It seems to them that, like in every resort they have been to, there is a promenade, shops, pubs, jewelry stalls, and generally life goes on. There is no such thing here. These gated communities by the beaches are specially located off the beaten track to provide peace and quiet. Here, people don't come here for a week's holiday to have a drink because they paid for all-inclusive. Each apartment has a normal kitchen, so you have to shop and cook. Although some communities have a restaurant on their premises, usually open for a few hours every day or, depending on needs, only a few days a week. However, there are usually dozens of other restaurants or local pubs nearby, which can be reached in a few minutes by car or ordered by delivery. It's true that deliveries are not very popular yet, but they are slowly reaching Panama. Some communities, such as ours, also have their own small shops where you can buy some basic things. Well, let's get back to gated communities. There are two types of gated communities, those in cities and those outside cities. The difference is huge. People live in such gated communities in the city, mainly for safety reasons. People live in such communities near the beach, mainly because of the comfort. Of course, whether in the city or outside the city, there is a wide range of various communities, and the rule is always the same, just like all over the world. You pay more, you get better service and a more interesting place. The concept of a beachfront-gated community began in Panama about 25 years ago. A group of Panamanians did not want to have their own houses and all the problems associated with it. So they started creating gated communities where the administration is paid for management. And if more people decide to do so, they can have a better standard at a lower cost. The first such settlements had only houses. Therefore, when someone came to Panama 20 years ago, there was really no choice but to buy a house. About 15, 20 years ago, the first apartment blocks with access to the beach began to be built. And it is known that the higher the building, the nicer the view of the ocean. And here I must point out that Panama has a good geographical location. There are no particularly strong earthquakes in Panama, even though the Andes pass through Panama. There are earthquakes from Costa Rica to Alaska. And on the other hand, there are earthquakes in Colombia all the way to Chile right in the middle of the Andes, right here where Panama and the Panama Canal are, there is a small break and it does shake, but much less. This lack of earthquakes has a huge impact on the ability to build skyscrapers. And as you have seen the skyline of Panama City, it is dotted with high-raised buildings. Needless to say, there are no tsunamis on the coast and hurricanes only occur in the Caribbean on the other side and actually never reach Panama. For this reason, several gated communities started building skyscrapers. In Panama, 
there are 10 such neighborhoods on the beaches with one, two, and sometimes even three skyscrapers. A few years ago, the Panamanian government stopped issuing permits to build tall buildings right next to the beach. So the number of such communities with skyscrapers will no longer increase. Well, I prefer a house over an apartment anyway. I didn't grow up in a block of flats to go back there, no. When we came to Panama for the first time, we were just looking for a house. In Canada, we always had a house, so we got used to living in an apartment. Then, when someone gently pointed out to us that maybe we could buy a condo, we dismissed it by saying that we wanted a house. And when we looked at houses in various parts of Panama, in the city, in the mountains, and finally when we landed on one of the local beaches and saw the local skyscrapers with apartments, we knew that we would not have a house here. Generally, in a country with such a long coastline, it's nice to live on the ocean shore rather than somewhere inland. What can you buy in such communities? A little about the apartments themselves. First of all, you can buy here from something very small to something very large. The smallest apartments in our community have two bedrooms and are approximately 140 square meters. The larger ones have three bedrooms and are from 170 to 200 square meters. Several people bought the entire floor. Here there are only two apartments on each floor. Then their condo is 330 to 350 square meters. But this is not a rarity in Panama because, for example, in Panama City, they have recently built a skyscraper where smaller three-bedroom apartments are 350 square meters and larger four-bedroom apartments are almost 450 square meters. There are also communities with smaller apartments, approximately 50 to 80 square meters. And what is the cost of purchase? The general rule is that the closer to the beach and the better the view, the higher the price. If you have to walk to the beach for about 10 to 20 minutes, the cost is much lower. If you have to travel by car, the cost is even lower. In one of the cheapest communities, the smallest apartment can cost around $150,000, while the most expensive, large ones in fancy gated communities can reach up to a million dollars. An example would be Punta Barco, a modest community, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, 85 square meters, $144,900, HOA $125. Likewise in El Palmar, one bedroom, one bathroom, 60 square meters, $150,000. Punta Kelo, nice gated community near us, advertised from $246,000 to $656,000. Casamar, a very nice large community offering condos from $290,000 for 120 square meters, unfortunately further from the beach, but these are apartments. There are also villas. Only here, the prices start from $750,000 and the upper range has no limit because it goes into millions. I don't want to buy, but I want to rent. What does it cost? And as I mentioned previously, the range here is enormous. The better the view, the higher the price. The closer to the beach, the higher the price. The better the gated community, the higher the price. It also depends on whether you want to rent for a week or two, or for example, for half a year or a year. Prices drop significantly when renting for a longer period of time. How much is the cheapest way to rent for a long term? The lowest price I've heard here is around $1,100 per month. But I'm talking about a small apartment in a so-so gated community where you don't have much of a view of the ocean and you have to walk a long way to the beach if you want it even cheaper. We're talking about some small houses among the locals far from the beach. Then you can even go below 1000 I must admit that I only heard that sometimes someone rented something like that. But in almost nine years of living here, I have never met such people. If you want to rent for a longer period of time, but in something mid-range, it's around $1,400 to $1,500 per month. In a community such as ours, a smaller apartment on a low floor without a view can be rented for $1,500 to $1,600 per month. If we're talking about something with three, not two, bedrooms and somewhere higher with a better view, we get from two and a half to $3,000 a month. I would like to say that you can also rent villas by the beach, but no one rents it for a long time. And for example, renting a luxury villa for a weekend may cost four and a half thousand dollars.
the most luxurious gated communities and the largest condos may cost quite a lot. But it's a very small market, so let's focus on what most people are interested in. For cottage lovers, Casamar is just finishing a new project. Terraced houses for only $450,000, 202 square meters, three bedrooms. But worth to point out that it's on the first shoreline with a view of the ocean. I will also add that a bonus to purchasing any property over $200,000 is receiving a residence in Panama. At least that's the case today, but I talked more about it in the video about the residency. Important, renting or buying. Do not do it online. If someone comes for a short time, there is really no choice. But if you want to rent for a longer period, or certainly if you want to buy, you can check on the internet how these apartments or houses look like in this area, but do not buy or rent online. Only when you come here, you can look around the place and definitely find a much better opportunity by renting from the owner. We rent our second condo for almost half the price when the client contacts us, as opposed to what he would rent the same condo on the internet. I've already purchased it, but what is the monthly maintenance cost? It is slightly different for owners and slightly different for tenants. The largest fee is the HOA. Here we call it maintenamiento, a monthly fee for the administration for maintaining the land in the community. Swimming pools, green areas, power generators, access road, and the entire wide infrastructure in and around the community. We also include water and gas. So we only pay for electricity and utilities internet and TV if you want. The more a gated community has to offer, the higher the maintenance costs and therefore the higher the monthly fee. The rent is always paid by the owner, not the landlord. In our neighborhood, you pay on average around $450 to $600 a month for a typical apartment. Villas pay about $750 a month, but they also have their own gardeners, pool staff, etc. Electricity is quite expensive. Interestingly, rates per kilowatt of electricity are higher in better neighborhoods than in poorer ones. For example, for an average two-bedroom apartment, your electric bill can be around $100 per month. But if you start using all appliances heavily, it may jump to $300 per month. Pensioners, that is every woman over 55 and every man over 60, have an additional 25% discount on electricity bills, regardless of whether the person is still working or not. The condition is to have a resident card. There are also other privileges and discounts associated with it, such as discounts on medicines, bills in restaurants, hotels, and even airline flights. Property tax. We now pay about $320 a year. In Canada, it was over $10,000 Canadian dollars a year almost 10 years ago. It should be mentioned here that many properties have tax exemption for 5, 10, or 20 years, depending on when the building was built. Home insurance, we pay about $220 a year. Not mentioning that my car insurance costs barely $160 per year. I would like to mention here that every apartment is legally required to have insurance. But this is Panama, so legal doesn't mean that everyone has them. Most locals in the area don't have any insurance on their tiny houses, and that's okay. But in gated communities and cities, it is generally enforced. What is so better in such a gated community? And what is not in the house? Maintaining a house here is incomparably more difficult than a house in Canada, the US or Europe. Those who live by the ocean know exactly what I'm talking about. Generally, maintaining anything is much more difficult here. It's about the climate. It's not air humidity or high temperatures. This may not be that good, but the most important thing is salt in the air. What does it look like in practice? First, you paint the wall because there are some stains. Once you've finished it, it's time to renovate the garage, so a second painting. The roof started leaking even though it had been repaired two years ago, and this time the company said they would use better material. But they also said the same before. Then you need to fix the pool because it's been three years since the last repair. The palm trees have fainted, so they need new ones. The driveway started to overgrow because everything grows like weeds here. Then another wall, back to the first floor, garage, swimming pool, palm trees, and another driveway, etc. As a friend of mine, the owner of one of the villas said, 
After just a few years, we had had enough of one thing, then the other. Oh, I would have bought a large condo a long time ago, if only I could find a buyer for this house. That's why when you live in a condo, you can forget about such problems as above, and you can spend your time on more pleasant things than another renovation. Now let me jump to something basic, although a bit boring, power generators. This is super important because like all over Latin America, they often cut off the electricity here. The electricity supply company is always in the hands of the state, so problems with electricity supply have always been here and always will be. And that is why solid generators in gated communities or houses are essential. Not every community has them, and houses generally do not have them at all for various reasons, mainly, of course, cost. If you buy a house, you should always buy and install a generator. If you live in a good gated community, you don't have this problem. Sometimes we hear opinions from newcomers who dream of buying a house here, saying that it's not that big problem, because if they turn off the electricity there for a while, it's not the end of the world. Well, if you come here for a very short time, maybe so. But if you live there permanently, it has a huge significance. And what does it actually look like in practice? At the temperatures in Panama, your fridge defrosts at an alarming rate, so there is no chance for food to survive for several days in such conditions, which means all your supplies go to the trash. You never know how long the electricity goes off, whether for 15 minutes or 10 hours. Often your water pump also runs on electricity, so if you don't have electricity, you don't have water. Your air conditioning also stops working, your fan doesn't work either, so you can't sleep comfortably at night. Moreover, frequent switching on and off of the electricity destroys everything connected to the electricity. The lifespan of your refrigerator is much shorter. The same with the TV, washing machine, dryer or dishwasher, not to mention the AC. At the beginning, it is important to invest in a decent central fuse because the tiny ones bought in the store do not work very well. The next thing is that if you don't have electricity, they often turn off the internet as well. For us, this is a necessity because we work via the internet. In Panama today, our internet speed is one tetra for download and upload. Therefore, by choosing better gated communities, you are guaranteed that you will never have problems with electricity or the internet. In over eight years of living here, there has never been a time when there was no electricity or internet for longer than an hour, and that's really sporadic. Gated communities also have their own deep wells and their own sewage treatment plants. Better gated communities also have municipal facilities such as a gym, party room, game room, restaurants, their own spa, and playgrounds for children. Some have golf courses or their own marina. Football, tennis, and basketball courts are also standard, so everyone can find something for themselves. In these better gated communities, the Residence Council also organizes social life for the residents. In our case, it looks like this. Once a month, music events are organized and either a band or a DJ plays, and we also organize Christmas and New Year's parties. In addition, it often hosts a happy hour where anyone who wants to come for a drink can do so comfortably and easily. People who have never lived in such gated communities and do not know how they work often mistakenly think that my electricity and the repair of holes on the street is provided by the government, so it's much cheaper. The costs of your own electricity, water, and street maintenance are much cheaper comparing to Canada where we live for 20 years. Property taxes there were much higher than what we pay here in the form of HOA. Moreover, while living in a condo in Canada, you also pay HOA fees unless you have your own separate house. But the general opinion back then was that we had to pay otherwise there would be no road, it wouldn't have lights, we wouldn't have water, and nobody knows what would happen to the sewage. If you don't know how it works, this explanation makes sense to you. At least that's what it seemed like to me because I just didn't know any better. Now we have all this here on our own. We pay for it out of our own pocket. And not only is it at a higher level, but it costs us much less than what the government or city hall provided us with. And if we're talking about costs, here's another paradox. You pay less and get much more. I've heard this apt expression. The best investment is in your standard of living. 
and it's even better when others pay for your standard of living. I am not a supporter of this approach, but we have such a situation in gated communities, whether we like it or not. What's going on here? Most of the owners of these apartments are Panamanians, but they don't live here. They come here on weekends or come here, for example, once a month. They usually live and work permanently in Panama City. And this is their vacation base by the ocean, where they often have the same or higher standard than in apartments in a big city. Please do not confuse this with a cottage in North America or a summer house in Europe. So when they come here for a long weekend, we are very grateful to them because we finally see who pays for it all. That's why we meet them with pleasure. And then we say goodbye to them with the same pleasure. Because after two days, almost everyone returns to the city and we have the whole community only for us again. It is similar with the majority of foreigners who come here, for example, for half a year and spend the other half of the year in another country. Then their apartments are empty here, but they have to pay a monthly rent, which is actually used mainly to improve standard of life for those who live here permanently. So thank you for that. We appreciate it a lot. I would add that the vast majority of people do not want to rent their apartments, even though they are empty most of the time. Everyone just wants to keep their things there, have their own pillow, and know that no one else has slept in their bed. We have approximately 150 apartments and houses in our community, but 30 of them are permanently occupied. Security is quite important. It is true that Panama, together with Uruguay and Chile, are among the safest countries in Latin America, but there is no need to provoke fate because it is always Latin America. When you buy a house among the locals because it's cheaper, you have to take into account that the local culture requires you to share what you have, and if not, they will help you with it as soon as you leave home for a longer period of time. We have been living in our community for over nine years since its establishment, and no one has ever broken into either the apartment or the car. If you make a good decision when choosing a place, you can actually forget about this problem. It is very convenient to use local services in Panama. Of course, you can do this whether you live in the community or outside. They will come and take your dog for a trim and drop it off at your door for $40 to $50. A qualified physical therapist is $50 to $60 for a home visit to you. A qualified personal trainer will come to you at a local fitness club for less than $40 per hour. A cleaner will come in for four hours to clean your apartment for between $25 and $50, depending on how big your apartment is. Social life. This is an incredibly important topic. If someone thinks that they need a book, their company, and a monkey on a palm tree to be truly happy, I would advise them to think twice because it's cool, but only for holidays. Once you live somewhere permanently, it is very important to have friends nearby and those from the internet will not replace them. The most common trap here is that you don't know my friends. They are so great that I will have them for the rest of my life, at least on the internet. Unfortunately, the truth is that once you leave, your family still stays in touch with you, but your friends disappear most quickly. I remember someone explaining this to me once after I moved to Canada, and I insisted that my situation was unique and something like that wouldn't happen. And then, after two years, I had to admit he was right. In a gated community, social life is in order. And here I must point out that not every gated community is well organized, even differently. Only some gated communities can boast of it. The point is that when you live in a house, regardless of whether it is in the gated community or outside, it is much more difficult to organize a social life. When you live in your house, in order to have a social life, either someone has to come to you or you have to go away to meet someone. It's different if you live in a condo. Just leave your apartment and you can always meet three, four people and you have to talk to each of them. So you have this social life, whether you want it or not. You don't have to organize anything here. This social life comes to you on its own. Most people come here to have a pleasant time. And I don't specifically say for holidays because there are a few such people. This is one of the main things that makes it different from a resort. People come to the resorts only for a while, for a week or two. There are not many contacts made there because there is neither time nor inclination to invest in new acquaintances with people whom we will probably never see again in the future. 
in such a gated community, you get to know your neighbors for years. They come back here, they grow old with you. Sometimes they come with family you meet. Your children also visit you because they have a nice time at the beach. So everyone here knows each other very well. And suddenly you have 50 new friends, something you never even considered. And most importantly, they have time for you. It's not a neighbor who goes to work or friends you meet every weekend. Here such people are right outside your building every day. If you have time and feel like it, you meet them. And if you want, you lock yourself at home and have complete privacy with a nice view. And you can easily focus on work. When we were looking for a house or apartment here, we didn't pay any attention to who lived there or what our social life would look like here. This was the future. And back then, we were only interested in the price, how close to the beach, and how big the apartment was. That's why everyone here emphasizes one thing. Before you buy something, rent something, and live for a while to get to know the place and see where you'll feel most comfortable. Everyone praises their own, and that's exactly what it is. We always praise where we live and explain it as if nothing could be better and it was the most accurate decision in the world. But I might add something for balance to emphasize that gated communities in Panama are a special place. As I mentioned in one of the episodes, I always had such a gypsy soul and I changed places very often. There were nine schools, three primary schools, three secondary schools, a college and two universities. In Canada, it was six different houses in less than 20 years. It took me three years of studies, two hours a day, to find a country where to move from Canada. Then suddenly nothing has changed in the last eight years. And what happened? Some disease. Bankruptcy. None of these things happened. But what happened was Panama. And although we are still looking for a better alternative, we have not been able to find a better place in any country in the Western Hemisphere. And we have already visited almost everything that is interesting to check here. There is nothing keeping us in Panama except that we have such a high standard of living here that we would not have anywhere else. We can move to a better place at any time because we take our work with us anyway. But for the same money in another country, we would have to give up either this or that. And we no longer want to make any compromises. I would also like to point out that in Panama, you can easily make a mistake and find a place that you will not be happy with after a while. That's why I recommend this type of beachfront communities in Panama. And I think there is a plenty to choose from since there are as many as 25 of them in the area. It is something very unique and maybe I will help someone to find a dream place thanks to the homework I did for them. Thank you very much for listening. Greetings from Panama and have a great day.